So how should believers respond to a Biden presidency? Worship leader and recording artist Sean Foyt, who has led numerous prayer and worship events across the country, joins us now with what he believes are some powerful ways Christians can navigate this new season. Sean, great to have you with us. Oh, honored to be with you guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, as we turn the page with the new Biden administration in the White House, you've come up with several points to help believers pray and stand strong during this new era. Tell us about it. Yeah, we uh, I published kind of a four a four step four steps that I believe as I was fasting and praying that the Lord gave me. You can go to lettusworship.us to find them, but I'll just mention them quickly. The first one uh, worship God because he reigns above it all. Uh, the second one is to pray for Biden and for the nation. The third one is to stand for truth, even if it means standing alone. And the fourth one, it's a little spicy, uh, never bow to the mob. Wow. OK, let's start with number one. Uh, you talk about <laughs> okay. worship. Why is worship yes. the first thing on your list and the first thing believers need to continue to do? Well, I think, you know, worship aligns our perspective. Um, it, it, it helps us remember the reality that he's still on the throne. He's still in control. And it really catches us up to see things from his perspective. Listen, God is not intimidated. He's not worried. He's not concerned. The angels are not hyperventilating. Like heaven fully knows that the agenda of God's will is going to come to pass in this season in America. All right. Point number two, pray for our leaders. The Bible, of course, commands mm -hmm. us to pray for those that are in authority, even if we disagree with them, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, we have a call and a mandate to pray. You know, as we prayed for Obama and as we prayed for Bush and Clinton and Trump, we have a call to pray for Biden. You know, we, we can pray that God's wisdom would be released over that administration and that his will would be done. Yeah, because if they succeed, then we all succeed. Exactly. All right. You say we are entering a time of testing. What does this mean yes. for the body of Christ and how can we prepare? You know, it means that we have to fear God above man. We have to fear, you know, even though that, that standing up to the mob, standing up to this wokeness, you know, in our culture is, is going to have repercussions as we've seen with censorship and as we've seen with shadow banning, as we've seen with all of these things with big tech and and really with our culture, people want to try to cancel you, but we cannot bow. You know, we can't bow our knee to those things. We really, I mean, this is a time more than ever where the church, I believe the church is going to get her spine back uh, for what she believes and what she stands for. The Bible says to believe the prophets and you will prosper. As you know, scores of prophetic voices believe that Donald Trump would get a second term. And they said so. How do we reconcile what the scriptures say about believing the prophets and the reality of what actually happened in this election? Yeah, I think we really have to face that and, and, and we just have to say, hey, listen, they missed it. Uh, the prophets need to own up to that. They need to you know, apologize, which a lot of them have, um, and really need to seek the Lord on how and why that happened. But I don't think that means that we need to never listen to prophets again. I mean, these are men, you know, men and women that that, you know, they, 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 they fail sometimes, you know, they miss it sometimes. Like I, I tell my kids all the time, you know, honor your father and mother, which I remind them, I have four kids, I remind them repeatedly, uh, honor your father and mother, but it doesn't mean that I'm perfect. You know, it doesn't mean that I don't mess up. You know, it doesn't mean that I, you know, I, 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 I don't always hold to that perfect standard, but yet I still want them to honor me. And I believe that we still have a calling to listen to the prophetic voice, but I feel like this is a season for the prophets. I mean, we got to take inventory, you know, we got to look at how we missed it, why we missed it, and how we can regain that credibility back. All right. Well, we've been hearing that revival is coming to America. Is it here? I believe this is going to be an incredible hour for the church. I am telling you, everybody out there that's listening, this 2021 is going to be a beautiful hour for the church in America. You know, with the intensity of this season, as we've seen all over the world in revival history, the church always rises to the occasion. And I believe it's going to happen this year. I'm so excited. You know, we're seeing thousands gather together in these cities across America. There is a hunger that I've never seen before. And I believe it's just going to increase. Nothing can stop the spread of an unstoppable <laughs> kingdom. Amen. Well, Sean, does this mean that you will continue, continue your Lettuce Worship events all across America? 
Oh yeah, we're just getting started. I mean, it, it's it's just beginning. I feel an incredible grace, and now more than ever, we gotta gather in the spirit of unity. We gotta gather and seek the face of the Lord, and we gotta go after His kingdom in this hour. Well, I appreciate your optimism, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers do as well. Sean, thank you for so much for sharing those prayer points, and uh, we will be talking with you soon. God bless. God, God bless you guys. Thank you.